and they've been knocked back twice before. Thankfully, we, we got we got knocked back the third time. But I, I'm in a time that's come where you know the least be a change in the legislation, mm -hmm. but you can't keep on going back and back and back for, for you know times to time to get out of power. Um, so that's some things that I think you know maybe Frank we could ask you to take for us as our MP. And I think lo locally, um, you know, it, it's the it's the sort of phrase used in the in the reply. You know, we, we really do need to have a very strong cumulative impact policy um, so that locally, you know, we can do, the licensing committee can, can use that to do something about it. But I think, for me, um, this, this is the number one reason in many parts of the world why we have large um, problems with antisocial behaviour, because people can, can get alcohol, a hold of alcohol too readily. And I think, you know, uh, both locally and nationally, it's something that we, we need to, to take strong action on as, as a priority. I will. Can I just say, just stepping back to the courtyard, sure. unfortunately, it, it's very tremendously placed for young people to be. And they can sit a bit like a wine <laughs> bar. They, no, but take, it's a bit of a People go to eat, and then they're seen standing up and drinking, and, and they don't down. Have, it's like a wine bar. So if you're trying to pack as many people as you possibly can into the premises, and I think that's a major concern. It was just to say that we're doing a piece of work on the coordinated Chair Lightison. Well, I'm going to tell you, the bigger picture is this. At the moment, on average in Britain, there's 31 pubs shutting a day. Right? If I could take you round here now, within 10 minutes, I could show you at least six pubs shut in this area. So that's the bigger picture but that is going on. So what's, what's replacing it now is the 20 pubs, as Pat said, that's replacing it and they're charging maybe four pounds a pint. And yes, why people go and pay that is because they say there's no trouble. So with all these pubs shut down, and Birkenhead, Bidston, there's only one pub in Bidston, it's littered with pubs shutting down, turning to flats, turning to convenience stores. So what's happening now is that people are saying, they're getting onto it, people are staying in more, because you can't afford to go in the pub all the time. So what you get now is a lot of applications of off-licenses, and that's what we're up against. Now, some off-licenses have been turned down. Going back to Pat's point, there's 15 people on the licensing panel. Three of them are asked to sit um, at a hearing. If they live in the ward or they know the owner, they can't sit. That hearing can go on from three hours to five hours to eight hours. Some hearings have gone on for two days. Some of the people have come for the applications, they bring barristers, they bring solicitors. So whoever's the chair on the day facing them, you are facing maybe a barrister solicitor. That's no problem. You cannot bring politics into life, you, you, you cannot, I'm not suggesting to say that you are. We're, we're told by the legal lawyer on the day, our legal lawyer, you have to carefully do this. Sometimes we're faced with residents who have complained, but the police are not supporting. The environment are not supporting, the building control are not supporting. So when the council's determined their policy at the end of the hearing you have to take down to the account and I agree with Pat and that's it, there's got to be some change in the legislation to give us more flexibility we've asked the licensing officers to look at a cumulative policy for the widow and, and she is looking at that Stuart and then Alfred I just wanted to, to 
you require a body of evidence that it's going to fall out on the license and protect it. Well, in, in the case of a virgin application, that's virtually impossible because they haven't even started the trade. Um, but the, the real problem is the, um, the regulatory agencies. Um, they, they assume because there is little evidence in Oxford of um, the effects of uh, alcohol, but the evidence doesn't say that it doesn't exist because it does. I would sure, I and mean, I don't think we're going to really take any further tonight. Yeah, but you've heard the councillors. It, it is an issue of concern. Um, Stuart put it in a wider context. If you might get a report back to help that process, but I, I, I'm, I'm just grateful that people like you are opposed to the extension of these um, applications. So thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not happy. Yeah, one thing. It is extremely important that if anybody has got any problems with any license fences, they report their concerns to the police and, and that then can be presented, that, that the fact of that evidence can be presented to the licensing panel. That's why the different, age, the different bodies who make representation, can make representation to the licensing panel, don't because they haven't got a place on record. Fine. Look. I really wish to press on because there's three other questions at least I want to, to do. John, you've got five questions down. Which one would you like to choose? Right. Then there's two. Paul's got a question down. I'd like to hear from both. And then I'd like to see. Is Patrick Dowling? Patrick, I'd like you to ask your question. John, which one of your five do you want? I'll just pick the one about the uh, the play area because I've had an update on that from the officer. I did get an email. I think I copied in Councillor McLaughlin. Right. The officer. Can you your question? Yeah. Can hear me? yeah the, the question was about uh, the minutes of the last meeting and that the wrong road name had been put down. It's it's in the pack anyway. Right. In what the number is it? It's a uh, number five. They number put down five. Gorsey Road in the minutes when it should have been Gorfey Road. All right, but I just good. I just wanted to update. I did get the the times the play areas should be open from an officer. But he admitted to me that it wasn't actually open at those times, so it's still an ongoing issue, unfortunately. Paul, yeah. oh, this is really about what we might do for this meeting. Um, the reason I've brought this up, it's been quite obvious to me tonight, listening to everybody here, that we really need the police commissioners to come along and try to explain uh, what her policies are on how she can interact with the, with Birkenhead and with the, the programmes that you've got going. And I thought it would just be nice because she is elected and paid by all of us, that she comes along and actually talks to us. Before, when it was a police um, committee, we could actually pull the councillor and ask the councillor to come along, but now she's dedicated, and it would just be nice just once once a year just to hear from her. Very good. Um, well, what we've got two dates on the agenda there, February and May, and I think what we'll do is we will invite her, which, which, which one of those she can make. Right. Yeah. Very good suggestion. Thank you. Uh, can we have the one on the priory now? Oh, nice. Sure. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll stand up because there's a fine set of shoulders here <laughs> in front of me, <laughs> yeah. and I don't want to be talking <laughs> to them. Um, but my question is about Bunhead Priory, where a current program of some four hundred thousand pounds is in progress to restore the ancient monastic buildings. And last week, I formed the intention of taking a very old resident of Oxford <coughs> down to the Priory for him to see what was going on. This is a, a, an ex-serviceman with a World War II record and um, I thought he would enjoy it and also walking around the, the uh, Priory precinct which is itself a war memorial before the Remembrance Weekend. That was my intention. It's too much for him to go into the Hampton Square and stand there for an hour and a half and couldn't do it. So I went down to see what we would be in, in Canterbury. First of all, we park. Then there's a contraption which will take his, he can't walk without wheeled zimmer. The contraption has a platform which will lift you up to the graveyard area. I asked, can we operate this ourselves? No, you should be able to but there's a part missing, 
So we will have to operate it for you, this being the wardens on the site. Once I get up to that level, I start walking around as if I'm pushing a wheeled zimmer. And I can tell you that there is no obvious route around here for a 90-year-old who can only walk with an aid. The, the route is fraught with dangers, prominent flagstones, etc. The question is: the question is, is anybody conducting health and safety examinations of this site, making sure that it is accessible for the elderly? We talked a lot about youngsters today. Nothing no about the elderly. Can we address that? Very good. It's a very valuable site, clearly it should be accessible to as many people as possible. Following the question, Mr. Darling, I looked into this. We did do an access audit in 2010 and we did some of the risk assessments. 2010 seemed a while ago, taking into account the comments I asked to the ask the Council's Health and Safety Office to look at the site again. He's been there very recently, produced a report which we then have a copy of and the 2010 report, and there are further things we need to do. First of all, as you say, it's the oldest standing building on the nursing side. It has very poor mystic protection, the highest level of protection. Um, and therefore, there are some limitations on what we can do with those buildings. It's like this one, this is now, this has the same degree of protection. Um, and secondly, that means it will take us a while to do the things. We, we can definitely put in some additional ramping. We can definitely introduce a machine that we've got that can allow people to go upstairs. Those metal stairs that are stood in the staircases, we purchase the climbing machine that will take people up those stairs using a zimmer or using a wheelchair. We can certainly improve the lighting in the museum. To do those things, we have to have permission through the conservation of this sort of English heritage because it's a criminal offence to alter very old well buildings without authorisation, so it will take us a while. But when your comments are valued, and I think it's a classic thing of somebody going and looking at something with a disrepair of eyes, the right we've invested quite heavily there the last two years with benefiting from the substantial grants. It is a building that we need to look at. Very it's impressive. It's tucked away quite hidden, uh, uh, but it, does, it has the greatest history of any building in the world. We need to make it a bit more accessible. We will do more, we will, we will do what we can. It won't provide a full solution because of the nature of the building, and it will take us a little time to get the authorization. Great. Um, might you also take up the point of the doctor of um, Burton Hill? An hour and a half is a long time for people to be standing, often on the cold November yeah, day. Exactly. Um, and it, we, it would be marvellous to open up the discussion how we could more imaginatively and with more commitment remember the day. <coughs> um, I mean, it's again, it's the new chair, it's here. We can arrange to bring people into the building and use the back thing. And even the lift, because we just put a new lift in here, we can bring people up to this floor and they can use the balcony. Let people be sheltered in the doorway and use the balcony if they don't want to. We also try and put some chairs outside at the back, but if anyone wants to come into the building for the service, we can arrange that. But also, my point was that many people find it excessively long um, and are actually finding it difficult given the time span to actually just physically stand there if they were pushing it. And I think we actually should think about that. And granted that the servicemen who served in the wars are now 80 plus. Absolutely. You see that when they put their wings down. Um, I think we ought to actually build it around them and similar people do that to their knees as well as on the wall. Right, uh, can we, is, is James is James K here, please? Okay. Yeah. Could we have George, can you ask his I'll question? I'll just very quickly respond. What Bob James asked for was when he was expecting where to start on the three or four of the generation. And he also did some things to squash the room, separate the time, but the steam of the cell in order to use the empty house to try and recite them. But the answer to that is the risk of two years old phase of the degeneration scheme in China. Global, the developers are currently working on the next 10 year proposal in conjunction with the Gender, the Housing Association, <coughs> which in total will comprise eight bungalows at Hillside Cove. 76 new homes for a mix of rent and sale on the main church road site. 
are subject to the proposals being finalised and agreed between these two parties. The planning application to the church road site will be submitted in December to enable the programme to start on site in March 2015. And the most important point is there are no proposals to meet any part of these sites for travellers. Um, is Sheila Howe here? There's two questions on about the Hounsfield Lane. Oh, that's right. Thank you, everyone. Two questions are raised about the petrol station on Hounsfield Lane, which is a bit of a mess, but from what I can see. Um, we got a response from health, the Environmental Health and Traffic Management, who said that they visited, visited the site and it is a matter of concern. Um, the, the, in the process of being carried out to clear the vegetation and the litter, um, and where it is in private ownership. So I think this is more based on the conversation we touched on earlier about improving the environment. It's how we can work with these, with these areas that are in private ownership to, to tidy them up. So what we can make sure is that's taken forward on a um, proposal for that, for that contract and see how, how we can sort it out. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Are there anybody here? Is anybody here who has a question now? Who would like the question answered? Please, your question is. Yes. Uh, my name is Bob Johan. I asked a question, and if I can retrieve it here. Which I'm one is it on the other? 23. Great. Can you give me turn to 23 and please ask him? I, I, I asked this question as, as, a, as a constituent, as a member of the public. I'm not part of any organisation or charitable organisation or anything else. But I'll read it out. There's a highly successful public health initiative. It's called the IMO. And it's set up a number of years ago by Merseyside and Cheshire Cancer Network. The unit goes to various sites throughout Merseyside. One of the best sites it uses on Wales, right outside Asda in the Range Road. And it provides health information and guidance with a strong implement, emphasis on cancer. It connects with many vulnerable departments and members of society. And it offers advice and signposting.